Hi, right, this is Officer O'Neill. Watch me coming up next with Sheriff Baca. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Magic Johnson. Watch all, I'm talking about all the Laker action. You hear me? Everything we do, three-point slam, dunk, fast break, uh, defense, block shots, all everything right here. Entertainment and sports today. Thank you so much. Wonderful meeting you. Sports. All right. Okay, I got a lot to say about sports. Bring it on. Bring it on. Hockey. Bring it on. I want to say congratulations to Entertainment and Sports today on your 10th anniversary. Yes. Gracias. Feliz. Entertainment and Sports today. It's a double. 15 years. That's legal in many countries. There you go. 15 years. Entertainment and Sports. A wonderful, wonderful thing you do. See, that sounded good. I'd like to congratulate Entertainment and Sports, Sports today, today for their 10th anniversary. 10, Ten years. years. Can you believe it? Very nice. Congrats. I tell you, that's that's over That's over nine shows they've so done. So wait, it's on. Entertainment and Sports. <laughs> and Sports Today. Although no sports tonight. No sports okay, tonight. Okay, fine. And I can't wait for more of both Entertainment and Sports <laughs> Today. Tonight Thank you very much. TV. Congratulations. Happy anniversary. Ten years, not bad. Uh, this is Kevin Costner. And uh, be sure and uh, watch me on Entertainment and Sports Today, if you would please. <laughs> Embodies the exhibition and Titanic the experience right here on Beach Boulevard. Right off the freeway, right in front of Knott's Berry Farm. You can actually hear the people on the roller coasters here at the movie, old movie land wax museum. That's Bodies the exhibition, Titanic, now here at Buena Vista. right across from the medieval times. And here we are at Titanic the Experience, which used to be the Movie Land Wax Museum just outside of uh, Knott's Berry Farm here on Beach Boulevard. And now it's an amazing experience of Titanic the Experience and bodies. So make sure that you uh, come to Buena Park while they have this new exhibit. I'll be opening up tomorrow. And I would like to welcome you to the Titanic Experience here in Buena Park, California. We're just down the street from Knott's Berry Farm in the old Movie Land Wax Museum. Here you can experience what life was like for the Titanic and meet various characters from the ship itself. Um, just like myself, I am a first class passenger. We are now going to do, we're going to take a tour of the ship. As you may notice, all of us are dressed in recreations of authentic Edwardian clothing. Um, and I would like to uh, invite you, along with Entertainment Sports Today, sure. to take this tour of the yeah, Titanic. Again, my name is Mrs. Yeah. Lily May Futrell. The world's most famous shipwreck was born out of intense competition at the dawn of the 20th century. It was a response by the White Star Line to basically a challenge from the Kinnard Line. The Cookie Kinard Line had just come out with Lusitania and Morte in 1907, and all the White Star ships were looking very small and pokey. The White Star Line decided, hmm, we won't build record breakers in terms of speed, but let's build record breakers in terms of size and comfort and luxury. She sailed on April 10, 1912, from Southampton 
went across the channel to Cherbourg, France, where she picked up more passengers, cut over to Queenstown, Ireland, to pick up the last passengers, and she headed out across the Atlantic. In four days, the roughly 1,300 passengers and 900 crew on board will meet their fate. The questions and accusations that arise that night still resonate. Why was Titanic speeding through a known ice field? Why weren't there enough lifeboats? Were Titanic's materials or design defective? One critical factor in the disaster is not open to question at all. The weather. The night of April 14, 1912, it's exceptional. The calmest ocean that sailors on board who had been to sea their entire careers had ever seen in their years of service. No moon, so they had no light except for starlight. No moon and flat calm are stunningly beautiful. Yet a deadly combination. Because it was that glassy smooth, you have no waves, no breaking of any foam around the base of, of an iceberg. Look out in front of her fleet sees a mass of blackness in front of the ship. He doesn't see the burn. What he sees is the absence of stars and an interruption of the horizon. He rings the bell three times, races to the telephone, says, I ready. Within seconds, the Titanic has collided with the iceberg. How strongly you felt the collision depended on where you were in the ship. High up in first class, it's possible George and Maybell Thorne weren't even aware of it. Lower down in second class, Franz Pulbaum probably noticed some vibration. Third class passengers like Margaret Devaney would have felt the greatest impact. There's only one surviving eyewitness to the actual point of damage. Fireman Frederick Barrett in boiler room six. What Barrett sees will later prove critical to understanding Titanic sinking. Numerous compartments are open to the sea and they now begin to flood. It's not long before they determine that the wound is fatal and the ship is going to founder. It took less than 60 seconds to seal Titanic's fate. She will hang on for two hours and 40 minutes. And then, She's gone, leaving questions, suspicions, and mysteries. Welcome to the Titanic. I am Lily May Eichel, and I will be taking you on a journey through the boat. Um, here we are in the shipyard. Um, lots of lovely items from our ship. It's such a beautiful place. This is actually photos of the riveters putting together the Titanic. Um, each riveter had a different job. One would uh, heat up the rivets. One, uh, he would then toss them. There was a catcher that would actually catch it in a uh, uh, wo uh, wooden yeah. barrel. Um, one placed it in the hole and one hammered it in. Uh, it was quite a process. It was a dangerous process. Um, but they could uh, do it as quickly as 30 seconds each. Um, they, they did need to build um, tools specifically to be used on the ship that fit its exact measurement. A metal cage surrounding that whole, that entire piece. class ticket was actually 52 pounds. Um, that was for a, a, a regular, not the millionaire suite, of course. Hi, it's Steve Kelly here for Entertainment and Sports Today Time Warner. Today we're going to take you on an exciting adventure throughout the Titanic experience. These are the actual some of the artifacts that were outside the ship that have been recovered. We'll be able to see along a lot of recreations here. This is really something amazing that's going to be putting up tomorrow. And the, uh, the thing, you know, body, so, uh, 
make sure you try to make it so now that satchel is where um, anything that you wanted to keep with you, um, of course you put all of your large luggage down in um, steerage, um, but anything else that you'd like to keep with you is kept in these leather satchels. Um, and these are actually the uh, baggage claim labels. Um, so when you check your baggage to be put down, um, this is what you would use to to get uh, your baggage back when we landed. And is that an original right here? It is. Wow. Um, anything that was kept in a leather bag that was found down there, um, the organisms from the ocean were not able to, to eat through the leather. Wow. So things were very well preserved down there. That's amazing. Now, they were given these bags? These are just bags that people these buy? These are from the White Star Line. Oh, I see. So each passenger is given a, that Correct. bag. Oh, I see. Correct. Oh, okay. Captain Edward J. Smith. Uh, he was the, uh, the commander of our ship. Uh, a lovely man. This is a replica of our first class hallway. Um, these are actually our millionaire suites back here. Uh, to the left is Charlotte Cardoza's room, and across the hall from her was Bruce J. Ismay. This is an amazing experience here. You get to uh, feel exactly the way that the uh, first class passengers felt. This is an amazing recreation here. As you said, the millionaire suite, literally people that were above first class? These were the richest on board the ship. There were only right. two millionaire suites on board. A lot of oh, okay. Families. You guys are all in character when people come through, okay. So in the movie, DiCaprio, he played, I assume, the third class, and he met a, a first class first woman, class, yeah. right, on, on that famous st staircase, I guess, yes, he first fell in love with her. Oh, great. Okay. This is a photo of a first oh, yeah. class staircase, which I'm sure you're very familiar with. Um, above us would be a beautiful glass dome that was no, let all the light in. Memorial Okay, but he, I need him to paint. That's here you can see some actual money that was found and has been preserved. All, I guess it's what over a hundred years. Yes. Right. That's been preserved, and as was explained earlier, there were in leather satchels that kept um, that protected these this paper after all these years, and it's still here for you to see. This, these are all original. Oh, I have one of those. <laughs> this is an 1894 Morganhead silver dollar. Um, it's in very good condition. Um, I had a, a I had an 1895, I think, that I, when I used to collect coins. I know that's very valuable. This coin right here. You could all see an Indian head here, a walking liberty, you could see a mercury dime. These are all coins of the time, which we don't see anymore, of course. The first class passenger list of Titanic read like a who's who of the world's most influential, wealthy and sophisticated people. Among them were names like Guggenheim, Strauss and Astor. I, I think if you remember from the movie that was Lady Astor? Yes. Right.
This is one of our third class latrines. Now, at the time, our third class was not necessarily used to indoor plumbing, so they were actually self-flushing toilets in the third class. Whereas the first class in their ensuite uh, toilets, there was a full chain to flush your own toilet. This ship is like a palace, my cabin ripping, hot and cold water, a very comfy looking bed and lots of room. Y you, Wilner, first class passenger. And now we're going to take a quick peek here. I don't think we're allowed inside. No. No, but we'll just take a look at it here. This is an actual first class... Uh, this is a first, uh, first class cabin. It is not the millionaire suite, um, but as you can see it was rather lovely accommodations. A fun fact about our first class passengers, earlier we spoke about the millionaire suite and Charlotte Cardoza actually had one of those two millionaire suites back in the hallway. She did not like any of the accommodations in her room so before the Titanic departed she actually had everything removed and her own furniture brought in. <laughs> Amazing. Even now people wouldn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. actual piece of linoleum from our uh, first class dining room. And some of the plates and bowls. Um, each class had a different set of china, looked slightly different from each other. Now these are all actually found? Right? Yes, they were, they were in the seabed. So it's not just a few artifacts, you have a, many artifacts. We have a about lot 200 more. artifacts um, pulled up from the Titanic. 200 original artifacts that are over 100 years old that have been found in the bottom of the sea in this amazing condition. Phenomenal. In the picture behind us, um, you can see it's kind of warped. Um, that is due to, uh, during the sinking, um, just the, the pressure and the movement really did change the way some things looked. This is actually the Turkish bath, um, what we would think of today as a spa. Um, the uh, first class um, had entry to it, the women were in the morning, uh, gentlemen had access in the afternoons, you could get massages, um, there were lots of different spas, um, there was even an electric bed. It was, they thought that electricity was good for the skin and kept you young. Yeah, electricity just came out in the late 1800s, I remember, Thomas Edison. Third class passengers traveling to Titanic were mostly European immigrants looking for a better life in America. Some had already established themselves in the United States were returning after visits home. Others were joining family members who had traveled ahead of them and had sent money for their journey. Some passengers may have been able to afford a second class ticket or wanted to save money for their arrival in America. A third class ticket on the Titanic to New York costs $40, about $900 today, which is a far cry from the $4,500 price of first class luxury suite around $103,000 today. A third class cabin would likely be occupied by up to four strangers who spoke different languages. The opulent is the first class, but this is a third class uh, hallway. Um, as I was saying, the, uh, any single gentleman would sleep uh, in rooms near the front of the ship. Any single females would have rooms near the stern of the ship. And any families or married couples who were traveling together would be, uh, have uh, rooms near the center of the ship. And there were four bunks in each room. Um, often you would meet your roommate as you were boarding the Titanic, or, or as you got to your room. This reminds me of that scene where the water's coming and they didn't yeah. want to open the gate, they wanted them to die. Here we're down in our boiler room. Um, fun fact to know, uh, the, the gentlemen who work down in the boiler rooms are many consider the heroes of the Titanic. Um, even after she struck the iceberg, they did continue to shovel the coal. Uh, the, the boilers did uh, generate the electricity for all the lights. If it weren't for them, the electricity would have gone out much sooner, um, whereas the lights did stay on until just the moment before she sank.
Yeah, I do remember that. In fact, right now in, in Valley's Las Vegas, they have a Valley's Jubilee a stage show, and they have a part of a very famous sinking of the Titanic. And they, they do show the boiler room, how they kept working there as the ship is sinking. Many of those men yeah. gave, almost all of those right. men gave their lives right. just so people could find right. their way to the top of the ship. And is it true that one person just kept playing the violin? Uh, our musicians uh, did continue playing. Um, all eight of our musicians did go down with the ship. Wow, that's, that's, uh, that was true, just yeah. like in the movie. That's amazing. And this is from the boiler room, uh, a piece of coal that they actually found from the Titanic. This is actually a shaft from one of the watertight doors. There were 16 aboard the ship. Um, they were uh, supposed to go down and keep the water from rising over. Um, one of the interesting reasons that they failed to work the way they thought they did is um, they only rose about 10 feet above water level. Um, so if you think that just slightly above a um, ceiling of today, they didn't have a lot of space to go over once the room filled. There was actually an electrical panel that they would hit and it would lower these, um, sealed them very watertight against the floor. Ice warning, 1.45 p.m. from America, ice report passed two large icebergs, and they have the actual nautical degrees there. So as she was saying, um, this actually lowers, goes all the way down to the ground, so to seal in any water in case there's a, in case there's any problem with the ship, at the, so they would make it airtight, they were hoping. As you can imagine, there were plenty of libations aboard the ship. These are some of the uh, bottles that were pulled. Um, the champagne bottle does actually still have champagne from 1912 inside. Really? Which one? Right this here? This one right oh. here. Wow. As Lily May just said, there's actual champagne still left in this bottle from 1912, which is just fascinating that's still there. And it's going to be safe forever and nobody's ever going to drink that one. <laughs> Iceberg. You can feel free to touch it if you'd like. You mean a recreation of an iceberg? Yes. Um, this is fresh water, of course, but um, the actual ocean was, believe it or not, four degrees cooler than this iceberg. Uh, Seawater uh, freezes at a much lower rate. It's amazing. They uh, actually made a, a real iceberg here to give you a, an idea of what they were sailing through way back when. And what's this right here? This is actually the sinking of the ship. Um, how, how they believe that she hit the, uh, the seabed floor. So it's a like a, a, a video, a recreation, yeah. trying to give you an idea. And as you can see, all the items that are scattering on the seabed there. As I said before, we do not pull anything from the ship. Um, we just pull from the debris field around the ship. So those would be the items that we've recovered so far. And how much of the ship did you say is basically left down there? Uh, most of the ship is still down there. Right. It's broken into two pieces. Um, we've only recovered a, a very small percent of the items um, that originally had been on board the ship. As you can see here, my name is Lily Mae Futrell, and up here we see a quote from my husband Jacques, For God's sake, it's your last chance. Go. These were the last words I ever heard from my husband as he put me into a lifeboat. So they actually have authentic recreations of the characters that really were on the original Titanic that guide you through this uh, amazing exhibit here in full costume of the time. This is an actual section of the hole with the rivets. Um, this is the only artifact that you are indeed allowed to touch if you want to stick your finger in there and you can actually 
touch a piece of the Titanic. For whatever reason, they picked out this. It, it mm -hmm. feels like metal. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually from the hulls. So they feel it's safe. It's not going to disintegrate. But they still have it under under protective glass. Most all the items are under protective glass. It's the only one, as Liam may said, that you could um, actually touch. It's a piece of history there. And that's the closest you could come to the Titanic, unless you want to go diving down to the bottom of the sea. Mm -hmm. Touched is due to um, the oils on your fingers. And as you can see, there's just a small section here that has been touched and it's worn away some of the metal. This is actually one of only two megaphones that was, were aboard the Titanic. Um, this is the only one that has been recovered from the ocean. Uh, it's likely that possibly Captain Smith used this very megaphone um, to give some of his last orders. survivors sitting in the lifeboat um, right at dawn. It was such a clear night that night. You could see stars forever. There was no moon in the sky that night. And just imagine sitting in the lifeboat watching the Titanic, possibly knowing someone, uh, your husband or children may still be on the boat and watching her break in half. And and on all of our artifacts here you will notice a, a description label uh, in the bottom right hand corner you will see some numbers the first two numbers are the year that the item was recovered um, this one was in 2000, and the following numbers after that slash are the actual item numbers. So you can look up these items. Um, it's easy to refer back to them in that way. Uh, each item was numbered immediately when they were brought up from the ocean. There were over 2,200 passengers aboard the Titanic. Um, of those numbers, only 705 survived. Uh, we did lose over 1,500 to the ocean. They did find some postcards um, that people had picked up on their travels or that people were planning to send home to their family. Um, I believe some of them may have been inscribed, some not, but they, they were impeccably saved down there. We had a uh, perfume maker aboard the Titanic, and these are a few of um, the scents that he was traveling to America with. They did find them impeccably saved and uh, at one point did open the bottles to see uh, what, what scents he was traveling with and what they smelled like. Um, they do actually sell a recreation of what one of his perfumes may have smelled like. This is one of the uh, telegrams from the Marconiograph aboard the Titanic. from the Carpathia. The Titanic Relief Fund was to assist the survivors and the families of the lost passengers and crew. This is actually a, a piece of sheet music that was found in a, a musician's bag. Um, and you can see it it is faded, but um, down at the bottom of the ocean, the colors were preserved quite well down there. Over here, they give you a boarding pass when you first arrive here at the museum, and then you can match up to see if you're one of the survivors or if you're one of the lost. So I assume, of course, it's in alphabetical order, so it won't take that long. There's so many names to look at. So I'm going to get that out right now. And when you arrive here at the museum, they give you an actual ticket with a, with a name on it, on the actual people on the ship. They give you a little bio on him and everything, and um, what they do is, uh, towards the end of the uh, tour, you can to find out whether or not you're one of the survivors, or, or, or if you're one of the people that actually sunk the ship. So, on my ticket here, it said, uh, my ticket it tells you a little bio there, it says I was a second class passenger, and it, um, it says uh, from Cornwall, England. It tells you a little bio about you. Anyway, so Mr. John 
Henry Chapman, if you look right here, was one of the 168 passengers that were second class that were lost. It's quite fascinating to me, so. And this is like a really a nice souvenir ticket they give you, a boarding pass on the original White Star Line. After the loss of the Titanic, they did actually have hearings here in the United States as well as England um, to investigate uh, the happenings behind the tragedy. Um, that's where you will find many of the, um, the quotes from survivors of the Titanic. The RMS Titanic was lost at 2.20 a.m. on April 15, 1912 and discovered on September 1, 1985. For 73 years, she lay lost and alone over two miles beneath the surface of the North Atlantic. In freezing waters, where the pressure exceeded 6,000 pounds per square inch. This is the D-deck door. This was actually the first class entry on board Titanic. Um, it did hang on for several years, uh, quite some time, uh, but it eventually did fall off of the boat onto the seabed and that's where we have found it. Uh, this is actually the uh, recreation of the seabed. Um, over here you will find some pieces of china, a uh, stock pot from the kitchen, and a piece of um, one of the benches that was aboard the deck of the Titanic. You can see how, how things actually laid there in the bottom of the ocean. If you remember, in one of the first rooms we were in, you saw the hull of the Titanic as she appeared um, the day that she set sail. Over to our right here, you can see uh, what the hull of the Titanic does look like today at the bottom of the ocean. And also, uh, I guess they're piping in sounds, you know, the way it may have been back then. Like uh, Lily Mays. Um, actually, the sounds of uh, the gentlemen today going down to the wreckage of the Titanic and the, the submersible. Oh, wow. Again, it's amazing how much they actually found on the, on the bottom of the ocean. And these are, and now they're giving you an idea of what it looked like after the ship crashed. This is like supposed to be the sand. Actually, that is the picture of these dishes as they laid in the seabed. Oh wow! So you have the actual remaining artifacts here, and then a picture while it was still in the seabed when they finally found it in 1985.